and we're live, 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 and trying to find reasons why it could be this answer, and I narrowed it down to four. And I've been doing research on each of them and to see which one is the most reasonable because, again, we don't have an answer from the man, and we all want one. So let's centralize it right now. Let's figure this out. The four most reasonable uh, answers as to why he stopped are, one, he was on vacation, Two, TriCaster problems. Three, premium service app coming out. And four, he got live streaming disabled. So I've been digging and digging and digging for the last few days to try to find evidence to either prove or disprove these four. And the way I'm going to go is whatever has the most supporting evidence, that's the one I'm going to go with. Full disclaimer is I'm a huge Joe Rogan Experience fan. I've been watching Joe Rogan ever since I was first shown it years ago. This is a pro Joe Rogan video right here. So if you're against him, you may not be interested in this. Secondly, I do not speak for him or his podcast or anything he does, but I do want to share my thoughts and what I found to be the most conclusive reason uh, because the community wants an answer so we don't have one so let's just see which one is the most reasonable but the most reasonable does not mean that it is the actual answer we won't know the actual answer until we get it from the man himself but being the most reasonable is the key idea here so that he doesn't have any negative connotations tied to his name or his podcast all right let's take a look at the first reason that has been proposed it's that he was on vacation that's why they're all being recorded what evidence do we have of this well, it doesn't seem like he's on vacation. And it doesn't seem like they were pre-recorded days before because when he has a guest on, if you look at the if you watch the podcast and then you look at the stories, like the Instagram stories of the guests coming on that day, they have the same shirt on. They have the same clothes on and everything the same day. So that leads me to believe that it wasn't pre-recorded a week ago. So that one right off the bat, I'm going to say that's not that's not it. Okay, reason number two is the premium service slash app that he's trying to develop. And that's why he stopped live streaming uh, because he wants to start charging for people to watch it live. Now let's see what evidence supports this. Evidence that supports this is there's a video of him talking with Sam Harris about him trying to develop an app. Makes sense coming from you. Um, My thought is I'm in negotiation or in discussions right now, and I talked to you about this too, about building an app. And what I want to do with the app is have a set amount of money that you pay per month if you Mm want to sign up for the app, and you get the podcast with no ads. Right. So you could either get it from iTunes or whatever, Google Play or Google Podcasts, or you can get it from the app, and if you get it from the app, you pay X amount per month, and you get the podcast with zero ads, and it'll stream live. I'm going to figure out how to to do both of those things. In this video, he says that he wants to develop an app, and he's trying to find a way to go live on the app. But that doesn't mean he's going to stop going live on YouTube. That could just mean he also wants to be able to go live on the app as well. In that same podcast, he's talking to Sam Harris about his business model, because Sam Harris kind of runs his business model like PBS would. And Sam Harris is saying to Joe Rogan how... His platform, how Sam's platform works well for him, and how Joe's it works great for him. The ad base model is really successful for Joe, and he's been like top dog in it for how many years? Quite a few. And uh, let's think: Why would he change that? You know, if it's working so well for him, why would he change that? There could be an opportunity cost there. And who's to say when he's talking about a premium service, he's not talking about a premium Snapchat, if you know what I mean. Something else that doesn't support the premium service theory is when a company or somebody is trying to launch a product or a service, they try to build hype around it before the actual public launch. Uh, Joe Rogan has not tried to build any hype around a Joe Rogan podcast app 
So for example, when Tesla was developing the new Roadster, you heard about the new Roadster probably over a year ago, and it's not even out yet. They're trying to build hype around the vehicle to gain people's interest. So he would be doing the same thing, don't you think? Uh, Joe would have long been talking about the cool benefits you would get with this app that he's developing. You say, yeah, you got to pay like five bucks a month, but you also get to send in like viewer mail and ask questions that I'll answer on the next podcast. He'd be saying things like that. He hasn't done any, he hasn't done anything to really promote it. Uh, and I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure he is developing an app, but I don't think it's going to be a money grab. That's the only way you can watch live streams kind of a thing. I think it'll be more of a way to centralize everything related to his podcast. And that would be more beneficial to him because if it's centralized like that, it wouldn't be, he wouldn't have a lot of his material stolen and he wouldn't lose out on a lot of monetization because there are a lot of channels that will take clips of his podcast and they'll put them out there before he can. And the biggest reason that I don't see the premium service being the reason he's not live streaming is Joe's a smart guy. Joe, Joe Rogan is a smart guy. Um, and to provide something for free for years and then just decide to take it away and charge for it is a very strange business model for somebody like him. I just don't see that in his character. And he cares about his audience. And you can see that. And I've seen that in countless hours of his podcast that I've listened to. You can see that he genuinely does care about his audience. I don't know if you've only listened to his podcast uh, like via an RSS feed or if you've only watched it on YouTube or if you've done both. But if you've done both, you know that like the first couple of minutes of every episode in an RSS feed has ads. All his ads are there, but when he uploads it to YouTube, he doesn't have ads. He could, he could upcharge to also put those ads in a YouTube video. He could do that, but he doesn't do that. He cuts those ads out and he just lets the ads that YouTube provides be put on the actual podcast. He hasn't really done anything that's a money grab. That's just strictly out of greed that I've seen from any history from Joe Rogan. And to think about this logically, uh, what I did is I just looked at his past actions and I used those to try to predict what he would do. And I couldn't see any sort of parallel where he would just randomly start going for money grabs. Because the app, if he is, if he is done live streaming so he can charge for it, that would be a money grab. Like I said, he's a smart guy and he cares about his audience. So to provide something for free for years and take it away to start charging for it, it's a very strange business model. And I'm sure that he's well aware if he were to do that, that would be a, that would be a major uproar and he would lose a lot of credibility. So I don't see him doing that. He knows these things, you know, he's thought about these things. So the premium service theory, I'm going to also say that is not why Joe Rogan stopped live streaming. Potential reason number three why Joe Rogan stopped live streaming. The TriCaster. They could be having TriCaster issues. Even in Joe Rogan's podcast setup page, on his website, he lists all the equipment he uses, and then for the TriCaster below, he has a little footnote that says it's problematic. So he's very clear and open about it being problematic. In the past, there's been lots of tweets about it being problematic. And in a recent episode with Jesse May Palooza, number 1279, you can hear him talking about problems they were having with the TriCaster going live. Last chance for romance here. Otherwise, we're just going to film and then put it up. Is it live? Really? I centered my chi. Sure? I centered you my chi. You made G. it happen. We've been having problems with our TriCaster. <laughs> doesn't want to try. It's like, not today. <laughs> Every third show. It don't, it I'm just tired. Won't, it won't go live. All right, so the TriCaster theory seems pretty plausible. It really adds up. Uh, so they're having problems with the TriCaster, even recently. Uh, the last one was just like three weeks ago. He had problems with the TriCaster going live. All right, but there's one key thing missing. He's been super transparent every time about the TriCaster, and it doesn't answer one very critical question. 
into this being 100% valid is the reason why Joe Rogan stopped live streaming his podcast. And that is why haven't we had any sort of response? Because if it was a TriCaster issue in the past, based on his past actions, he has notified us every time. Uh, this time, not so much. You know, he would say it. He didn't do that this time. And because of that, I'm going to have to put a slash to the TriCaster theory that Joe Rogan did not stop live streaming because of a TriCaster problem. All right, so where does that leave us? Three out of the four did not have significant evidence to really support that being the reason why. So the fourth, live streaming was disabled. This is a big one because you have to look at things that would indirectly affect Joe Rogan's podcast, things that really are not so much related to it, but have a ripple effect on it. Uh, so what's what are some things... So what are some things that would have an effect on his podcast? There are three different categories that we have to think about for this one. The first is what's going on with YouTube and what's affecting YouTube. The second is what's going on in the media. And the third is what is Joe Rogan's recent content been? So for YouTube, a trickle down effect that would touch upon Joe Rogan experience. Uh, let's see, what's going on with YouTube? What kind of heat has YouTube been receiving lately? YouTube has been getting heat for an individual who live streamed a bad thing. Uh, also for content. And then they've been getting heat from creators uh, about like the copyright system. They've been getting heat uh, in like Article 13, which is now Article 17. So all these things YouTube is taking heat for. So YouTube then is going to go and change how it functions. YouTube, because of all of this heat, has to make changes, and those changes affect the creators. And YouTube's response to this is they change the community strikes policy and how that functions. So previously, if you got a community guideline strike, you would have live streaming disabled for 90 days. Uh, but now they changed this. And this is a video from YouTube not from YouTube, but literally from the company YouTube talking about their policy changes and live streaming. I'm a live streamer. Does the 90 day freeze on live streaming still exist? We heard from lots of you that this was too harsh. So we shortened the 90 day live stream restriction. Now, following a warning, the first strike results in a one week temporary freeze on the ability to upload to YouTube, including live streams. In typical YouTube fashion, they don't really say, they don't really answer the question. He said he shortened the period of time that live streaming would be disabled. Um, but he didn't say how long he shortened it to. Some other things I consider are what's in the media. Uh, why is that going to have an effect on Joe Rogan? Well, let's first look at what's in the media. There was an, I'm not going to promote the article. I don't, I'm not going to link it. I'm not going to share it or nothing. Uh, because I don't want to give that clicks. I don't want to give that attention, but it is something we have to think about. For the sake of not wanting to promote anything they do, I made a uh, representation so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about, and I'm sure you're familiar with it. Do you remember Eight Crazy Nights and uh, the technical foul, you know? If you're coming off the street with 30 shoes on your feet... That's a technical foul. The, uh, this organization is uh, Whitey from Eight Crazy Nights. They are calling, they call technical fouls, basically. So, uh, yeah, that's the organization. Um, there was something in there about that. And uh, this is, this organization, you don't really, it's not that it's like, it's not like it's a credibility issue. It's that it's, uh, you don't, it's like bombarding. It's disruptive. It's, they'll bombard you. They'll try to like ruin you by just, they investigate everything. You know, they look into like all of this stuff. Now, why would Joe Rogan stop live streaming? Because of this. Let's think about it. To really, to make sure there's no accidental slip ups. 
which is a good move. Okay. That's it to make sure there's no accidental slip ups. Uh, because you don't need, it's not that he's like, it's not like it's a, it's not a terrifying thing. It's just, you don't need it. You don't want it. You don't, it's just so it's annoying. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, It's the equivalent to if you're going out to have like a, a bonfire and there's like a lot of mosquitoes out, you're going to put on some mosquito repellent just to avoid it because it's annoying. Not like it's life-threatening. It's just you don't want that in your ear. Just avoid that. Um, that's That's what this is kind of about. Uh, I'm trying to not be too direct on a lot about it, but so say, say he live streams and he says something that could be just taken out of context or used against him severely. Uh, that this could be a reason why he doesn't want to live stream. Right. Uh, and the third one is content. What has his content been like? Uh, what, what has been a talking point on his content? A lot of it's been about, um, you know, gender stuff and it's gotten political because he's had, uh, Ben on, you know, he's had, he's had Adam on and that got political talking about very similar issues, borderline in YouTube policy, meaning that it's, um, it's edgy content. It's things that you wouldn't want to put ads on because 50% of the people are going to like it. 50% of the people are going to hate what's being talked about. I went through the last few podcasts and I was looking at some of the guests and stuff like that. And I would look and I would see, okay, which videos are monetized, which ones have ads on them. Cause you can see when they have ads and which ones don't have ads because if Joe Rogan doesn't do anything that would, that YouTube wouldn't love, they all should have ads. Now, like no one wants to advertise on his content. Um, so let's see which ones got demonetized. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, uh, an ad will either appear, it'll be five seconds and you can skip it. Or there will be those little yellow lines in the in the bar of how far you are in the video. Uh, so we are looking for an ad that plays in the beginning that you can skip, or those yellow lines in a bar. So let's take a look. two that have been demonetized are the one with Ben and then the one with Adam. And if you look, they had, what did they talk about in those ones? If you watch them and you remember, you know very well uh, what they were talking about. So those episodes talk about a quote unquote protected group. And in YouTube's safety and abuse reporting, you can flag a video and they could be flagged for you got harassment, cyberbullying, impersonating, violent, blah, 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 all this stuff. And then the one here is hate speech against a protected group. Hate speech against a protected group. And the one that's key that these both fall under would be this one. So, okay. So now, remember, we have YouTube. We have what's in the media and we have uh, content. So YouTube has been getting heat for a lot of things and they've been making changes, policy changes and enforcing stricter rules, um, especially in regards to live streaming. So 
let's see. So we have YouTube getting heat and wanting to make changes. All right. Now for media, we have an article about um, some. I don't, how do I say this without like promoting anyway? Uh, it's saying Joe doesn't. It's saying Joe isn't Joe Rogan isn't accepting of people, I guess. And then we have Joe's content where he has discussions about these things, not discussions where he's ridiculing or nothing like that. He, he has discussions just about the topic in general. And YouTube will classify that as borderline. This could result in a community strike, which could result in not live streaming. So this could be a community strike. All of these things combined could mean a community guideline strike. And then you also remember there's things like copyright. You know, he's always asking, oh, can we can we play that or this or that to Jamie if he can pull something up? And Jamie will like sometimes say, oh, no, we can't. It'll get it taken down. So there's those things. But those three, YouTube, content, and what's in the media, are all on, like sim- are all on similar subjects, are all receiving hate, in a similar topic. Okay, so it's like the perfect storm, so to speak. So he's got, from one side, somebody watching his every move, to watching and hoping he slips, waiting for him to slip up. On the other side, you have somebody who is going to penalize any moves he makes that they don't agree with. And then on another side, you have guests who like to talk about these things. You have guests who have strong opinions on these things. So what do you do in that situation? So there's also actually been something super similar going on with other people. Like Steven Crowder almost got taken down recently. All right. And if you're familiar with what, with what's, and if you're familiar with H3's podcast, you know that, um, they have been pretty vocal about what's going on in the live streaming. Uh, you know, right here, they're talking about how their podcasts are no longer going to be live streamed because of a copyright strike. So what they want to do instead to avoid any of this, because people are very exhausted by YouTube's copyright strikes and community guidelines that are very um, inconsistent. Uh, there's no clear lines. So what H3H3 is doing is this. He's saying, if you want to avoid this happening, you have to go offline, post video first to let it run through YouTube filter. See what claims come on it uh, and if it gets blocked worldwide. Uh, That way you can fix it before making it public and avoid demonetization. Also, for the YouTube live streaming policy, uh, if you get a strike on an active live stream or an archived live stream, your live stream access may be disabled. These are some of the live stream restrictions. Now it could be he's trying to avoid all of this too. You know, maybe Joe Rogan just wants to avoid all of this. And then if you also look at the last podcast that was live streamed uh, with the fighter, um, a lot of the topics could fall under YouTube's like uh, cyberbullying or harassment. Um, it wasn't because it's UFC. It's literally a show that they put on. But they don't, you know, algorithms don't understand this. Uh, you know, you have uh, the guy saying how he's like, you, all these things he wants to do to his opponent. And it seems, it sounds very scary. You know what I mean? It sounds very scary. So he's saying all of these things. Um, that could have gotten him a community, a community guideline strike. And then after that, they were uploaded. Okay, so YouTube has been getting uh, pressure to be more transparent and to fix a lot of issues that are difficult for it to fix. Uh, April 15th, the article um, in the media came out that I was the one of a technical foul uh, or a news organization. Uh, okay. All right, so. April 15th, the media article came out uh, April 15th, 
the media article came out uh, about Joe Rogan's podcast. Um, April 16th was Joe Rogan's last live stream. April 20th, H3, H3 was talking about stopping live streams. Crowder post a video about the show possibly getting canceled. And April 20th, young Jamie retweeted H3's tweet. If more than a few videos on your channel were deemed offensive and had certain features disabled for them, you might not be able to live stream on YouTube. Uh, so two podcasts were demonetized and some last month were demonetized um, probably because of borderline content. And uh, this would fall under the category of a few videos on your channel being deemed offensive. The organization, all that information I just threw at you was very messy and I apologize for that. So I'm just going to sharpen it up quick. Key points are specific topic, uh, borderline content is being um, talked about to YouTube and they're getting heat for it. The media is putting heat on Joe Rogan about specific, that exact borderline content. Uh, and Joe Rogan's recent guest were talking about that specific borderline content. And the ones where he talked about that were demonetized, didn't have any ads on them. So with that being said, it's a mess, right? And what do you do in that situation? Think about it from Joe's perspective for a second. Um, if you were Joe Rogan, you know, a lot of those things that are going on currently are out of your control, right? You don't control what media is saying. You don't control what YouTube is doing. You don't control what people who are putting heat on YouTube are saying to YouTube. You control none of that. You control your podcast, right? So any proactive steps you could take would be within your podcast because you're not changing YouTube's mind. You're not changing the media's mind. So the only control he has is in his podcast. So if he were to do something, it would have to be something with his podcast. Okay, but now uh, the we need this question answered. In order for this to be a valid reason, this question has to also be answered. Why didn't he respond to us? Okay, so... If this was what was going on and why Joe Rogan stopped live streaming, why wouldn't you respond to your fan base asking you, hey, why are we not live streaming no more? We like the live streams. Why aren't we live streaming? He knows, like he's, a, I'm guaranteed, they're, they're aware we're asking. You know, so why aren't they responding to us? You know, they responded with the Jack Dorsey when people were, uh, when people were upset about the Jack Dorsey interview. He responded and he even went on to have another podcast with him uh, to sort of rectify the fan base being upset about it. Why isn't he doing that? Okay. You're Joe Rogan. If you're Joe Rogan and Whitey from Eight Crazy Nights is watching your every move to have a technical foul, uh, but your community is asking you, your fan, I mean, your, but your fan base is asking you, you know, why aren't we doing this no more? Why aren't we live streaming? If you respond, you can make it bigger than it is. This article I'm talking about that I don't want to give notoriety to, I'm doing this because I assume, not no. This article I'm talking about that I've been very like uh, like tiptoeing around is because I don't want to give any notoriety to it uh, because I think that's what Joe Rogan's strategy is here because you don't want to make that bigger than it is because look at anybody who's addressed a, like a small group calling them out, you know, a small group saying all these outlandish things. It never ends well, you know, when this outrageous little mob is calling you this and saying that and telling you, Oh, what, you know, you got to disavow this. You got to do that. When people do that in recent years, it doesn't end well, you know, it, cause it doesn't stop there. It continues. And then what they're outraged about 
and the things they're saying gain more momentum and grow bigger, making it harder on the person they're attacking. You know, it's not just you give an answer or apologize. It's not that. It's if you give it um, an answer, it's going to be held against you. And two, if he responds to, you know, you and me and all of his fans who love the Joe Rogan podcast, then uh, what that looks like to an outside source, people who aren't fans, people who don't wish the best for um, the Joe Rogan Experience podcast because it's such a big platform, people who want to see that get um, taken down, to them, if he addressed our questions, they are not going to look at that like nothing, you know, they're going to twist that and they're going to turn it into, Oh, look at that. It's an admission of guilt. Joe Rogan even said, Oh, Joe Rogan even said he stopped live streaming because he didn't want to say anything, uh, dumb on air that will hold against him. But it's not that Joe, Joe Rogan stopped live streaming because he doesn't want to say anything on air. That's going to be twisted. And in case something is said, that's going to be twisted or copyright strike, or just even anything, like if it's going to be just taken out of context and used against him. He's not live streaming because he wants this all to just kind of fade out. He's playing his card safe. He's avoiding a messy situation. Because if he starts responding to it, that's when it's going to be real, real like bad for him. If he starts responding to it, he doesn't hate his fan base. He's not, he's not responding to us because he hates his fan base, right? Doesn't hate his fan base. He's been doing this for so many years, giving it to us for free. Uh, you know, he's, and it's been interesting. Everybody, his fans love him, you know, they love him. You get the occasional podcast where, you know, you get annoyed with him, you know, but sure you have a best friend. Think of the last time you were annoyed with your best friend. You still like him, you know, he's like a best friend to us. Usually if we don't like something on the internet, if we don't like what someone did, we just stop searching for what they did. But we still search for what he's doing, what podcast he's putting out, because he's like a best friend. We listen to him for hours every time he posts an episode. He um, doesn't hate the community. He's not, he's not a shill. He's not trying to start charging us and just he's looking to get into our wallets. He's not doing any of that. Uh, and I think you and me and all of his fans, what we should do is try to understand this because even if it isn't this, even if it's like something like personal, you know, if it's something personal, we don't need to know, you know, we're not, we're not his daddy. I have a good feeling that once this all dies out and everything's getting squared away and all like all this just settles, you know, then, you know, I have really good faith that he's going to start live streaming again. I mean, come on. Do you really think that after all these years of live streaming his podcast, do you really think that Joe Rogan is going to stop live streaming it? No, he's talked many times about how he likes live streams and the authenticity of it. You really can't believe or think that live streaming's done and the only way it's coming back is if we're paying for it. That's not going to happen. He's talked so many times about how he loves um, doing it live because of the authenticity. Um, and we love watching it live because it's like, you know, oh, yeah, we're right there in the action. We're in the conversation. It's not going anywhere. You know, it's going to come back eventually. Yeah, but we got to you got to wait till things calm down a little bit. You know, got to wait till things calm down a little bit. Uh, so it's like a strategic move. He can't respond to us because it would be bad for him. It would look like an admission of guilt is what people would be calling it. Uh, so, yeah, same old Joe Rogan. Don't, don't you fret. He likes his community. The live stream is coming back. Let's not stress out too much. But, hey, as I said, I could be wrong, but to me, I like spent a lot of time like digging and trying to find as much information of everything going on that I, as I could. And this is the best answer I found. Okay. You know, I just wanted to have an answer that sort of compared and contrasted all of the reasons that each different, each different answer is a why you stop live streaming could be. I just wanted to have like reasoning and kind of lay it out. 
I found him trying to avoid the mess going on between YouTube, uh, the media, and the content he's had recently. Him trying to avoid that, all that mess, I, that's what the reason is. Okay, he's just trying to like lay under the radar for now because he doesn't want some like crazy attack call out culture nonsense going on or losing his channel, right? Like our biggest, my biggest thing is, all right, lastly, let's think about this. Look at how much everybody dislikes that they're not live streamed anymore. Imagine how much you would dislike if he had to stop doing the podcast. Okay. Think about it. Let's just think about that. All right. So these are just, this is just what I think is the most logical answer. So tell me what you think. Down below, I'm going to post a comment where everybody can vote on which one they think is the most valid. What they think. All right. So that's it. I love y'all.